I'm sharing my daily style for winter 2020. Today, uh, my outfit is like casual, sexy, badass. How can you be modest, but contemporary, and feel like a sexy lady, and warm and comfortable? So my outfit, um, I've got a petite leather jacket from um, Express Pleather. Some overalls from uh, Last Last Call, that's uh, Last Call Neiman Marcus. A polka dot shirt and button from um, Banana Republic. And um, I'm getting better at that. My Doc Martin Leona boots. So. And if you like really want to top that off with a little librarian touch, I'll, I'll put on my Costco glasses. I think it's a little too much, so I'll wear it when I drive. My lipstick, um, this I call Japanese 21, because uh, I take this Wet n Wild Mega Last cat suit in Oh My Dolly, hurry it up and put it on, and then in the center, use an orange mixer. They also make an orange, you can't miss it, it's like flamingo orange, and then um, Kat Von D has two. So I just use an orange mixer, it just adds like a little pink, a little orange, a little, um, little Japanese. Uh, I have another version where it's more of like a, a coral and an orange, and I call that Korean 21. Uh, my hair... I, I straightened it, but I only straighten a little bit here and a little bit here because I didn't want to lose the volume in the middle. I washed my hair today and I did two washes with my Paul Mitchell Awapui Wild Ginger Shampoo. And this one is a, not as familiar as their other white bottles. Um, you can get it at Ulta, Mom and Pop, um, $50 usually. If you get it online, be careful. There's some people, I see the reviews and they said, this isn't it. Um, and they're asking for $80 on, um, on the internet sometimes. But I did that twice. And then I used Amika Volumizing Conditioner. I didn't think it was necessary to use a shampoo because I was more concerned about washing all the buildup. That's part of volume, cleaning it up and lightening the load. Um, on the ends, in the shower, I use my Sally's Silk Element Jojoba Oil Moisturizing, moisturizing Treatment. I put this on the ends because that's where the hair is most fried from bleaching and um, dry. And then I put a little bit right here because it tends to dry there. Uh, and then right un under the nape of my neck, it gets really damaged from combing out tangles from frizz and humidity and then I just did my styling and I'll um, and then so I limited the flattening I wanted that flat look without losing the volume so that's kind of what my look and even that small difference of like changing it from the wave my big wave to the flat really like I get, gave it a youthful look and it kind of goes with the vest um, my eyebrows I do my eyebrow, I, I, do, I don't have any threading. I don't have any microblading. I tweeze my own brows. And uh, I use this Naked Basics. I use it with a, a brow pencil brush, $2, at, I, a brush from like BH Cosmetics. And this one, I start with this tone right here. And then I mix these two and do right here. And this color, I just put right here. And then the end, I use a, my BH Cosmetics brow brush in medium. You can buy brunette if you want a little bit darker or a little bit more darkness on the ends. Because I have br uh, brunette, and I'll use it just for the tips, just for more 
definition, just to give that full gradient effect. And these, I get them for about, I buy it in bulk, and I can get like four to six. And since they're sale on sale, it comes down to sometimes three seventy-five. I don't mind getting five. I don't have to think about it for a while, and it's kind of equivalent to the price range of Prestige. These you can get on Ulta, but I think the color selection is limited on Ulta. Um, and I always, I it lasts all day. Usually I, I don't have to reapply, even in the summer. As long as you're not putting moisture, you're wiping your moisturizer off here prior to doing your makeup. Um, I only carry it in my purse because sometimes I'll run my hand across and it'll just have like a gap. So I always keep it in my purse. Um, and the spoolie on this is the only spoolie I use because it just, it snags just the right way. I no longer use a brow gel like mascara wand because it's harder to do the reapplication or even stroking it. So I don't even bother with that. And I kind of like it a little fluffy. So I've got, over time I've tamed them. I've told them to grow this way. And if you don't, you're gone. Um... So today I wanted to talk about freedom. Uh, in honor of the whole theme of like MLK Day week, I feel like freedom is like what freedom means for me at least is ever evolving. It's always going to mean the same, like the right to be who you want to be, equal, the right to be treated equally, like a lot of a lot of things. But in in today's day and age, I consider it like freedom of the mind. Now, if let's just say a woman, because I'm a woman, so I can speak to that. Let's say a woman has a hundred points, a hundred acres of brain space. And since I was a child, I dedicated a good chunk of brain space, you know, judging myself judging my lack of um, will, judging um, why my body was different than somebody else's. And every time I ate a meal before and after, every time I got undressed, took a shower, got dressed, there were no positive thoughts about my body. And so I'm using your body as an example, but sometimes like negative thoughts, they become so habitual, at least for me, they took up permanent residence in my brain since I was a teen, since I started to learn to not love my body. And you can't tell, I was just like a skinny Asian girl. But it didn't matter. You know, all that media, and I'm not going to blame one outlet, but just the world taught me that this was very important and I knew I wasn't that. And I lacked will and I gave myself a very hard time. And if that takes up, in all honesty, it used to be maybe 40%. And as I got older and my teens and obs obsessed and absorbed with fashion and body and sexy, being sexy, being grown up, it consumed more of my time. And it just took up permanent residence. And I only had so much time to acreage to dedicate to things I really should have been focusing on. Now, I've recently lost a lot of weight. It happened too fast. Like, literally, my clothes, I'm not prepared. I have to order smaller clothes, which isn't a bad thing. But something happened. I stopped thinking less about my body because the diet I was working, it worked for me. And I trusted it because it was working consistently long-term. Even when I took a break and had cheat days, and I'm a sloppy person, so I don't really actually follow a diet to a T. I'm not researching it. I'll just get the point and I'll kind of go with it. And I was always able to go back to where I was. Before, I would diet. I, I had a personal trainer I would meet up with after I've already worked out an hour. And then after that, personal trainer the second hour I work out another hour and I, I achieved the body of my dreams in my late 20s 
to the point where I recall going to a Korean restaurant. And I'm Korean, and so we can be pretty critical of one another and just appearances, and it's just kind of societal, I guess. And sitting down, and the waitress, a woman, literally the first thing she said was not like, what do you want to drink? She said, she said it out loud. She said, you're so skinny. And I was like, oh, it worked. I had worked so hard. I mean, it took a lot of work and time to get to the weight I wanted, but it didn't stick. Well, I got, I got so thin, I got pregnant, but it didn't stick. I'm never going to have that kind of time again or focus. I was just like in between things with nothing to do. And now I have something that works for me and where I don't think about my body as much. And if I do, it's in a positive way and I want to adorn it and I want to love it. And it even changed my perspective about my lower teeth. I used to have braces and... Um, after them, the retainer, I left it in a napkin and it went in the garbage and I rushed down to the dumpster and I grabbed it and I boiled it and it melted. And at that time with my budget, it was like a cosmetic thing and I didn't, it wasn't something I could consider to spend another, I don't know, like $700, $1,000 on it. And now, like after losing the weight, my perspective changed. I noticed that my lower teeth match my dad's and my sister's. And every time I look at it, it reminds me of them. And as vain as I am, I really reconsider even thinking of fixing it. Because I wouldn't want to erase them. And um, it's like one of those freedoms that kind of like bubble to the surface. And then I started to have other thoughts, ex like exciting entrepreneurial thoughts. And then other thoughts, like all these like judgments I had or concerns or questions, like whether it was like this year or 10 years ago or when I was a kid, things started to connect and make sense. And it was like a period at the end of so many things. And then I got all crazy and now I'm on YouTube. But what if we can free women's minds? And all that creativity and intuition and... ideas and um, oh, power, personal power, literally, just like the movie Frozen 2, it like shows itself, like show yourself. And mine, it was like buried under all these negative thoughts. And once most of them, they packed up and left, what was going to take the, the place of 80% of my thoughts? Like literally everything from 12 years old, seven years old, eight years old, just bubbling to the surface and then some. So I think to myself, if you had that happen, I mean, everyone's different, it may not happen, but if you think about just forgetting even body weight, but like other things like people worrying about their loved ones. Now, we're living in a time where baby boomers are the majority and they're collectively reaching an age where Things, ha you know, degeneration, um, acute illness, chronic disease affects them. And um, like family members, like the dynamic changes. All of a sudden, you're the nurse. You're the social worker. Um, you're spending your weekends there. Um, you're c you have to consider your time with your family for yourself. You're at work and you're thinking about your, your parent or your loved one. Thinking about budgetary constraints and just like having trust in people to care for your loved ones. Just a multitude of like concerns. Now, if you think about so many Americans being baby boomers, um, just like general consensus. Like I remember 10 years ago, I did a paper and it was like just a stark difference in baby boomer percentage versus the rest of us. And if you think about that, like look to the left, look to the right on your BART train or your DART train or, or at work or in a restaurant. I mean, there's so many people with so much on their mind, whether it's 
where it, whether it it's a loved one or worrying about rent or heartache or trying to figure out your childhood if there was more freedom or more help focus on freedom of the mind it would be like be like a me in every home or every other home, literally just ideas, energy, creativity, optimism. Like it could be like an enlightening period in America where women, men are just, just on fire, like crazy on fire. Like don't know if it, things will work out on YouTube, but you know what? You just follow your dreams, dream big. Um, and just live with good intentions, I guess. And I just feel like if we could just free minds of negative thought, negative self-deprecating thoughts, or just help people help each other get through it and be more aware of it, maybe we could collectively just be more enlightened and maybe so enlightened that... The mothership will come and be like, you know what? You're ready. You're ready for like the Disneyland of the universe. And we're ready to go. And everybody get on the holodeck. Because Mickey and, and Minnie and Donald, they're all waiting for you. And, you know, I don't know if there's a Disneyland of the universe. But I just know that my heart, um, there's some string pulling at it. And it's pulling from somewhere. And it's reminding me of um, Disneyland. So, um, something to think about just weighs on me. And it, it, it's part of my life in many ways, like people I run into, people I work with. And lately, it's become, it's become consuming. I mean, not personally, but the people who are around me asking for help and advice. And I wish like retired nurses and social workers like would be part of like a club in town, like nurses in town, where they just give free advice and support. Without worrying about like litigious intentions, like a club. And we could impart our wisdom and share it for free. Um, with our community, like nurses giving back. Um, anyway, thanks for watching. Um, if you want to watch um, more videos about my hair, because I'll be doing crazy stuff, bleaching and all kinds. Also, I want to say that the one time I did go platinum, because I did go platinum and eventually all my hair fell out and I've learned a lot. I had orange hair and blue hair and pink hair and when I had like pastel purple slash lilac, I never got so much attention in my entire life. Not even in my 20s, not even that time that I got so thin that the Korean waitress like blurted out loud that I was so thin. Um, so anyway, light purple hair. Maybe one day I'll do it, but you know, right now I really feel like the the browns make in the caramel to ash dark brown, light brown territory is really coming into trend. I've been seeing it on the runway videos. So I'm a little orange. I attempted to do a DIY Tony and not so bad, but um, I want to go a little bit more light ash brown but being careful not to darken it too much so anyway thank you for watching and just think about what freedom means to you today anyway um and think about all the people who um work so hard to make our lives as comfortable as i it is and what the topic of conversation in america Maybe should really be, you know? Thank you.